merrier to bring a new type of news show. New insights, new styles, and new topics every day. We are News Generation. Bring news just for you. It's Tuesday, November 19th here in Seoul. I'm Song Yujin, and you're watching News Generation. Today, we're joined by Kwon Ji-yeon. Good morning. Good morning, and Brooke Prince. Hello, nice to be here. Happy Tuesday. Now, both are here to speak on behalf of those in their 20s and 30s. It's Tuesday, so we're going to begin News Gen with our keyword news. Today's keyword is antibiotics. New data from the Korea Disease Control and Prevention Agency highlights a widespread lack of understanding about antibiotics among both the general public and medical professionals here in South Korea. A survey of 800 non-medical individuals and 1,100 doctors showed that only 53% of the public recognized antibiotic resistance as a serious issue, while 28% correctly understood that antibiotics are intended to treat bacterial infections. And among doctors, 70% considered antibiotic resistance to be a major concern, while 53.6% said they prescribe antibiotics strictly in adherence two guidelines. As of 2021, South Korea's average antibiotic use was 1.2 times higher than the OECD average. So I want to ask you, have you also seen a tendency to over-prescribe antibiotics here in South Korea? Mm -hmm. Yes, of course. I've noticed that several times. When I'm feeling unwell, I usually try home remedies or certain foods instead of going, to, uh, going straight to the doctor. If it gets worse, I absolutely visit the hospital for a prescription. And I have noticed that antibiotics are often over-prescribed in Korea. For example, when I'm taking my child, my children to the doctor, I avoid clinics that prescribe antibiotics for something as minor as a cough, running nose. And I feel that taking too many antibiotics can lead the body to build resistance, right. making me absolutely worry that they might not work as effectively next mm -hmm. time when I see the doctor. And overuse also contributes to the growing global problem of antibiotic resistance. Mm, right. So it's definitely a serious issue to concern you in Korea as antibiotics usage, overusage of antibiotics can take a toll on your body. Then I want to ask you, what's the situation like in the States? broke. Well, according to the CDC, at least 28% of antibiotic prescriptions in the United States are considered unnecessary. Oh. So it is a little bit similar to what's going on in Korea. Mm -hmm. But I will say as an American, I think we tend not to go to the hospital if we can help it because it is so much more expensive there. And also it's much easier for us to go to a pharmacy and get the medicine that we need over the counter. Whereas in Korea, you can get very few medicines mm -hmm. without a prescription. Right. You, you have to go to a clinic first to get a lot of these medicines, which is why I think a lot of Koreans are getting more and more antibiotic prescriptions. Um, so I've definitely noticed since moving here that whenever I go to a clinic, I can often see an antibiotic in the medications that they give me. Luckily, I do have many medical professionals in my family, so mm -hmm. I usually call to ask them, do I really need these antibiotics or not? Of course, there's no way for them to diagnose me all the way over there, but mm -hmm. I think the key takeaway is to just ask questions. Mm -hmm. Don't just take the prescription as it's given to you without fully understanding why you were given that medication, particularly when it comes to antibiotics because of the problem of resistance. Right, right. And I think it's also important to educate and raise awareness among medical professionals as well, because they are the ones who are prescri prescribing this medicine. Now, meanwhile, as this week marks World Antimicrobial Resistance Awareness Week, the KDCA is promoting its campaign slogan, only use antibiotics when necessary in the right way. And for your information, antibiotics must be taken exactly as prescribed, including including the correct dosage and duration. And if you need to stop taking them, it should only be done after consulting a doctor and leftover antibiotics should be returned to a pharmacy or a public health center, not reused or shared with others. And that was our keyword news for this Tuesday. So we're now going to move on to our main discussion of the day. It's Tuesday, time to explore the latest trends in Korean culture here on NewsGen. So let's take a look at the screen to find out more. In just about three weeks, South Korean author Han Gang will attend the Nobel Prize Award Ceremony in Sweden as this year's Nobel Laureate in Literature. Here on News Gen, we've discussed the impact her win has had on Korea's literary and publishing industry. Today, we're shifting focus to another area. Her win has pleasantly surprised independent bookstores. 
For anyone unfamiliar, independent or indie bookstores are smaller, privately owned stores, not part of a larger retail chain. And Han Dong herself has been running an independent bookstore for quite a few years, right, Jia? That's right, right. That was that is actually located in Jongnugu District. So our author Han Gang has been operating, has operated, should I say, an independent bookstore called Chekbang Owner or the place owner bookstores, books that is showing deep affection by personally selected books to display. Play and planning various programs for the audience. Well, in a 2016 interview, when asked what she would do to make a living if she had to give up her living, give up her writing, she replied, I'd like to open a small independent bookstore. Mm. And after winning the Nobel Prize, the bookstore temporarily closed, but many people still visited the, to take pictures and share their experiences on social network. And the bookstore stated, we will take a break. We will be taking a break for a while. Uh, with plans to announce a reopening date later. As of now, no official mm. updates have been made so far. Well, I'm sure a lot of people are waiting for the bookstore to reopen because mm -hmm. we saw a really long queue of people lining up, especially after she won the Nobel Prize. Mm -hmm. So wonder when the bookstore will reopen. And as we're talking about independent bookstores, I want to ask you, Jiyeon, are we actually seeing a rise in memberships or visitors to these types of bookstores here yes, in the country? Yes, yes, we are seeing some rise here. In fact, the rise of independent bookstores began even before Hangang Novel's novel uh, recognition. According to Bookshop Map, a trend report in 2022, there were 815 independent bookstores in, here in Korea. And fast forward to 2023, and that number has risen to 884, marking an increase of 69 bookstores in just one year. So an average, this translates to 1.3 new bookstores opening every Every single week. Wow. So this upward trend highlights the growing demand for independent bookstores as spaces for cultural connection and unique reading experiences. The data showcases the resilience of these small businesses, even in a competitive market dominated by larger chains and online platforms. Mm, and following the rule of economics, in order for more bookstores to open, that means that there is definitely more demand. And I think that it seems like young people, not just avid users, are particularly drawn to these independent or indie bookstores and many are actually finding these places to be great places to relax right that's right and i think this is happening because amongst the mz generation there's this new trend called bukkangs which is a combination of the word book and vacation in korean so basically what people are doing is they're taking their favorite book and finding a cozy place to curl up in to read that can be outside or indoors and one place that's become very popular for these book vacations is, of course, independent bookstores right. because they have such a cozy, warm atmosphere mm -hmm. and they give a unique vibe that draws people in. And for those reasons, we're seeing them popping up all over the country, not just in Seoul, but also in Sokto, Gangneung and Jeju Island. And with the explosive success of Hong Kong, of course, the famous author that we've been talking about today, mm -hmm. the interest in books, K-literature and book related events in Korea has been on the rise. A hotel in Seoul even collaborated with the independent bookstore called Ajotta mm -hmm. to launch a book vacation package. Wow! And what this is is that guests will receive uh, books by Nobel Prize winners and this is to commemorate the first Korean to win a Nobel Prize in literature, of course, Hong Kong. Congratulations mm -hmm. to her. <laughs> uh, so for all of you book lovers out there or people who are maybe just getting started on your reading journey, don't miss out on all these opportunities right. to enjoy literature. Mm. So independent bookstores are definitely taking off here in the country. Now, what's really interesting is that these bookstores often aren't as accessible as big chain stores, which have locations nationwide. And we're living in an era where many readers have moved online. So I want to ask you, Brooke, what do you think is driving a surge in their popularity? Well, for as much as we talk about Gen Zers being glued to their phones and their screens, the phenomenon that we're actually seeing is that because they grew up online, they're kind of getting tired of it. They're, they are yearning for more stimulation longer form content. They want that feeling of a paperback book in their hands. Mm -hmm. In fact, these days there is a new term called text hip in Korean that the MZ generation is using on social media to indicate that reading is actually a very hip, cool and trendy right. thing to do. It's making a comeback. It is. And the hashtag bookstagram and textagram in Korean are making headway online as well. You'll see millions of posts globally uh, under these hashtags with people 
people showing off their new hobby. You'll see uh, pictures of them visiting indie bookstores, finding these rare books, and just really enjoying their reading lives. Mm. So whereas in the past reading was seen as maybe a boring or nerdy hobby, now it's one of the most popular hobbies amongst young people. In fact, one survey even found that the reading rate of people in their 20s in Korea was 78.1 percent. Wow. That's the highest reading rate compared to all adult age groups. So reading is great and young people are realizing that and that is why we're seeing independent bookstores do so well. Mm, right. So the growing interest in reading among our generation is definitely giving a boost to these independent bookstores. What could be some other reasons? Well, the rising demand for analog experiences has also played a role. They are oh. sick and tired of the, you know, digital world. Being digital natives. That is yep. right. So independent bookstores provide a break from digital overload, offering places where people with similar interests can meet in person. Mm. And independent bookstores offer a personal touch and a unique selection of books. This creates a warm and welcoming space that big chains or online stores can't match. And local, some local governments actively support these stores. For example, in Sochoko district, customers receive a partial refund for purchases made at independent bookstores. And you know, during the pandemic, independent bookstores innovated with delivery services and online book clubs for the audience. Mm, so a lot of standout and unique experiences and opportunities that these independent bookstores are providing. Now let's kind of expand our discussion and take a look at independent bookstores overseas. So are these bookstores popular in the States as well, Brooke? Yes, as the American, I will give you the U.S. experience. <laughs> in the U.S., the number of independent bookstores has grown to 2,433 more than 200 more stores than last year and nearly double the figure of 2016. And the reason why is because many customers seem to prefer the sense of community that an indie bookstore can provide. There's also a focus on books. It's purely about literature. Mm. Whereas I remember when I was a kid, I loved going to the national chains because they had books, but they also had, you know, toys <laughs> and stationery and cute stuff to buy. And I remember my father made me this promise that any book that that I wanted would be free. He would always get it for me. And of course, he ended up regretting that promise later on in life because I bought a lot of books. I really enjoyed the national chains, but the independent bookstores, they provide something different. It's not all about bestsellers. Mm -hmm. It's not all about making a profit from these other products. It's purely about literature, and they focus on amplifying the smaller voices in the industry. So those are some of the reasons why these little markets, these little shops have proven to be so resilient when everyone one thought they might fail. In fact, they're being very successful. Mm, and I also heard that when you visit independent bookstores, sometimes you can find books that aren't available at large chain bookstores. That's right. So they're definitely catering to a wider variety of demand or taste among diverse readers. And what about in other parts of the world, except for the states or Korea? Mm, well, as Brooke has mentioned, independent bookstores are seeing growth in several countries. In Japan, local authorities distribute reading cards that can be exchanged for uh, independent bookstores, books, and encourage community engagement with literature and in China tax relief and subsidies support the operations of independent bookstores individually helping them thrive in the meantime in the UK independent bookstores are growing in number appreciated for their personalized service and unique atmosphere and initiatives like independent bookshop week this actually further boosts their presence while these uh, stores act as cultural hubs hosting events and fostering meaningful community connections in the bookstore. Right, so at least among the countries that we've seen and discussed, we can see that these independent bookstores are definitely on the rise here. Now, to find out more what it's it like in other parts of the world, we also asked our viewers whether these bookstores are trending in their countries as well. And here are some of their responses. If we look at our first comment, Benny D97 says, we have quite a lot of independent bookstores that sell love novels or almanacs here in the Philippines. And independent bookstores here are really special when people want a real book to read. Lovely Day says the Notting Hill bookshop featured in the movie Notting Hill is a famous independent bookstore and I love its gift editions. Or KZLTV says independent bookstores in general foster discoveries in the world of publishing that online algorithms can just can't replicate. And I think that's what makes them truly special. So we can see from our viewers' comments that we are seeing a boost or a growing interest or popularity among independent bookstores. For more on this topic now, after a short break, we'll be joined by the owner of an independent bookstore who will share her experiences.
Newsgen wants to hear from you. Go to YouTube and search our channel Arirang News. Click Community and leave a comment down below. Make a new type of news with us. So today we're joined by Lee Min Hee, who is the owner of Sosa Library, an independent bookstore here in South Korea. Welcome, Minnie, to the show. Hi, my name is Min Hee Lee. I run the Sosa Your Library called Sosa Dangsine Soje. Great, thank you for joining us once again. So, Minnie, can you tell us a bit more about your bookstore? What makes it special, or does it have a particular theme? Yeah, we opened in 2019, located at Isu Station. People can rest reading books and read books with coffee and wine. The theme is a special book curation that helps people find the context of life. Mm. We, Sorry, we are okay. well known as a bookstore that sells underlying books like, like this. Oh. So, <laughs> Experts like college professors or authors underline passages in books that help readers find a deeper meaning in life. So people who don't have time to read can read only the underlined section. So also we provide a website and application called the Sosa Library. People can read a collection of underlined quotes and passages from books we want to make. Yeah, but so we want to make people connect from offline to online. I see, Mini. Oh, sorry to interrupt. By the way, uh, what has your experience been like running an independent bookstore? And has it been what you imagined? Uh, some things are just as I imagined, but others are the complete opposite. So the joy of running the bookstore, it's incredibly rewarding to connect with people through books. And I feel deeply fulfilled knowing that books I curate and the book club I run positively influences other people. But what I did not imagine is having less time to actually read books. <laughs> As selecting, buying, organizing, and hosting book club take up much more time than I expected. So I think uh, the running a bookstore is more suitable for those who love books themselves, not just reading a book. Well, it's always been a dream of mine to run my own bookstore someday, so it's very inspiring to hear you speak about it. I have one more question for you. Compared to larger retailers, what do you think independent bookstores can offer visitors that's truly unique? I think it's a deep curation. The, usually the independent bookstore, they provide a focused and deep curation. Every bookstore has its own value and themes. Like for us, Sosa Dangsin Soje focused on finding meaning in work and life balanced. Others might promote uh, personal growth or the joy of reading novels. It's all different. So we are able to deliver created books that align with the unique value. Second, we offer the human connection relationship form between the owner, bookstore owner, and customers, as well as among customers themselves. This sense of connection builds trust in our curation and bring people closer to books. It's a value that large chain stores and online retailers simply cannot provide. Right, definitely precious and valuable experience that independent bookstores such as the one that you are running are offering to visitors. All right, Minnie, thank you so much for your time today and wish all the best for your bookstore. Okay, thank you. Thank, thank you. you so Bye. Much. Right, so ending off, our guest Minnie touched on this briefly, but why do you think independent bookstores are important or needed? I, I really like the idea that Minnie just mentioned that each uh, independent bookstore, they have their own theme. Right, like. right. So unlike large chain bookstores in cities, independent bookstores are often more accessible. This helps to spread a culture of reading. And those in regional tourist areas also play a key role mm -hmm. in revitalizing local communities. And they offer carefully chosen selections and unique experiences that larger stores often lack. 
and they serve as cultural hubs hosting events and fostering connections within their communities and independent bookstores also support local authors and publishers right and this actually provides a platform for their voices to be heard through independent bookstores and because sometimes a good bookshop is the best escape from reality That's right mm -hmm. so these independent bookstores are opening doors not just for readers but also for emerging authors as well what do you think Brooke well I I think it's very important to preserve and protect small businesses in general, not mm -hmm. just in the literary world, but in all industries, uh, because there's nothing wrong with large retailers. Like I said, I enjoyed them as a kid. Right. Um, but there's something so special about what we call mom and pop stores, mm -hmm. where when you walk in, you can feel the passion of the owners. And mm -hmm. like we heard our guest Minnie talk about, it's hard work. Right. So we want to, you know, reward that hard work by making sure that those businesses can thrive. I think it's very important to create a business environment where smaller businesses don't get you know stomped down mm -hmm. by the larger ones they can be just as successful and as we've been talking about today I think that these small independent bookstores have proven that they can go up against the big stores mm -hmm. and provide customers with those unique experiences that they're craving right and I think that is what makes a very healthy competition so if you have time when you visit Korea why not visit an independent bookstore here and that's all from us today but news gen will be back tomorrow at 10 30 a.m. Korea time Special thanks today to Kwon Ji-yeon. It was my pleasure. Thank you. And Brooke Prince. Thank you. Great day. Thank you. And thank you everyone for watching and we'll see you tomorrow. We are News, News Generation. Generation.